Hallelujah. Welcome to uh, part two of this video, and it's called um, The Creator's Kingdom or Hell and the Lake of Fire. And you can read along, go to andrewshreve.org, click on Partner Letters, go to February 2014, and you can read this, um, read along with this teaching. Okay. We're up to the, the, the subtitle called Divine Incarnation. As the seed of Adam's descendants were all tainted with sin, that's, that's you and me, we were tainted with sin, we're the seed of Adam, right? to bring a holy man into the earth, a woman needed to be impregnated by the holy seed of the Holy Spirit. In other words, in other words, you couldn't put a, a seed of Adam into a woman because that seed, that ch child that was born would be sinful also. So there needed to be a divine incarnation. There needed to be a God seed into the woman. Thus, the Holy Spirit impregnated into the virgin woman Mary the holy divine seed. And as a result, Jesus of Nazareth was born. Okay. Matthew 1.20 But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus was born approximately 2014 years ago in Bethlehem in Israel. We are living in, in the year AD 2014. AD 1 would be the year of Jesus' conception and birth. They say, historians say, plus or minus six years. Okay, So basically, our calendar is based on the birth of Jesus Christ. That tells you something, doesn't it? Jesus is the creator, God, living in the body of a man. That's who Jesus is. The creator living in the body of a man. We can see this from Scripture. John 1.1 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Or the Word was the creator. It says, uh, all things, verse 3, All things were made by Him. Okay, the Word. So the Word is the creator. And then verse 14, And the Word, or the creator, was made flesh and dwelt among us. So that's what the gospel is saying, that the Creator was made flesh and dwelt among us. Yeah. It shouldn't be that abnormal. I mean, we're creating His image, so we're not unlike the Creator. Okay. This was a loving action on God's part. As apart from Jesus, there is no other holy man, and therefore no other way for the eternal redemption of humanity. Before accepting Christ, every person, who has sinned is condemned to hell and ultimately the lake of fire because they're unholy and God is holy. And they can't have to be separated. And are outside of the Creator's holy kingdom with no way in, except through being cleansed through faith in the holy blood of Jesus Christ. So basically, every human being, before they're born again, is outside of the Creator's kingdom. They've got no way in. They can't get in. You know, God wants them in, but they they, they got to get their sin cleansed before they can get in. And so we can see some scripture references. John 3.18 says, He that believeth on him, that's Jesus, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Is condemned already. They're already in that state. Why? Because they have not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. So the only way that a person can be uh, not condemned is to believe on Jesus Christ. Second Thessalonians, verse chapter one, verse eight to nine. In uh, Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his uh, mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction and from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. So everybody who is not obeying the gospel, that's not believing in Jesus Christ, will uh, be punished with everlasting destruction. Why? Because God has no other choice. Because God is holy. They must be cast into hell. John 14 verse 6. 
I mean, I know this is tough preaching, but you want to know the truth, right? John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is only one way to the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ. No other way. That means all other world religions are cruel lies. They're cruel deceptions to put people in spiritual prison houses to, to make it more difficult for them to be able... Actually, Satan inspired lies, right? To make it more difficult for people to come into God's kingdom. That's the truth. Does, I know it's not politically correct, but it's the truth. Jesus successfully resisted sin, remaining holy and completed his mission to remit the sins of humanity. Okay? Jesus was a successful missionary. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Hallelujah. He didn't sin. Praise the Lord. Jesus died on the cross at Calvary, was buried, and his soul went to hell as he bore the punishment for all the sins of humanity for all time, past, present, and future. Hebrews 10.14 for by one offering, that's Jesus, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Hallelujah. Perfected us forever by that one offering. There's no need for another offering. right? You don't have to keep doing a, an offering or the Mass every week. No. That's a remembrance, not an actual uh, reality. That's the, the, the communion or the Mass, the communion is a remembrance of what Jesus did. It's not a reenactment of what Jesus did. It's not the literal body and blood of the Lord. It's a it represents the body and blood of the Lord. Okay. One offering forever. The one offering's been done, it's been completed. We remember that, what he did. 1 John 2, verse 2. And he is a propitiation for our sins. He bore the wrath of God that we could be justified through faith. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Okay. That's what Jesus did. He bore the sin of the whole world. After three days, once the judgment for the sins of humanity was completed, the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus successfully remitted the sins of humanity. And as the Son of Man broke the power of sin, death, and the devil over the human race. Hallelujah. He is our champion. Jesus is our champion. Hebrews 2.14 For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same. God, Jesus, took part of flesh and blood. That he that through death, through the work of the cross, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. In other words, he zeroed the devil, he took away the devil's power. Theoretically, from humans. The devil still has power now, but if you're in Christ and in God's kingdom, the devil has no power over you because our spirit has been raised out of the power of the devil. Colossians 2.15 And having spoiled principalities and powers, or zeroed principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. When he rose from the dead, through the cross, he triumphed over the devils. Hallelujah. We have victory over the evil spirits that held us captive through Adam we became captive of the devil. Jesus freed us from that captivity. Romans 6.11 Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our spirit has been separated from sin, and we are now, our spirit, alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Human responsibility. The Creator requires each individual human to appropriate what Jesus has done with regards to the cleansing of their sins so that they can enter into His pure and holy eternal kingdom. The Creator gives humans free choice 
as to whether they want to enter his kingdom or not. To enter the Creator's kingdom, the Creator demands that humans come into agreement with him in their mind, will, and heart. Okay? This is important. It's not ignorance not ignorance will not bring you into the kingdom of God. Ignorance does not equal salvation. People need to be educated to know that they need to come into unity with what God has done. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay? Without faith you cannot please God, you cannot enter God's kingdom without faith. Faith is demanded by God. Hebrews uh, sorry, Romans five one, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is specific. You must put faith in Jesus Christ, specifically in his blood and in his resurrection, to go to heaven. Humans need to acknowledge that Jesus is the creator and submit their heart to Jesus' authority. So you can't come into God's kingdom if you don't submit to authority. You've got to submit to the king to come into the kingdom. Right? They also need to understand what Jesus has done by becoming a man and shedding his holy blood to remit their sins. Humans need to believe in the purity and power of Jesus' blood to remit their sins. Romans 3.25 Whom God has set forth, that set Jesus forth, to be a propitiation, right? To bear God's judgment for our sin through faith in his blood. See that? Through faith in his blood. You appropriate what Jesus has done when you put faith in Jesus' blood. Hebrews 10, 29 says, How much sore a punishment suppose you shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified. See, it's the blood of the covenant that separates us into the Lord's kingdom. And this person who's committing the unforgivable sin, they're now counting that blood an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. When we reject the blood of Jesus as a Christian, we're rejecting the work of the Holy Spirit. We're blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. That's unforgivable sin. So, this is all the Creator requires of humans concerning entering His kingdom. That they acknowledge and submit to the resurrected Jesus as their Creator and believe that Jesus' blood, through His death on the cross, has cleansed their sins. Right? Believe in Jesus' blood. Acknowledge the resurrected Jesus. When a human agrees with God in this way, the Creator recreates their spirit as holy and right with Him. It's a miracle. And brings them into His holy, pure and eternal kingdom. Okay, so we, what we need is a, a new spirit. We need to be born again. 2 Corinthians 5.21 because their old spirit was under power, Satan's power. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Verse 17 talks about what that new creation. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. A new creature in Christ. That's essential. Jesus said, John 3, 3, Except a man, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, verse 5, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Through ignorance you will not enter the kingdom of God. You enter the kingdom of God through being born again receiving a new holy and righteous spirit you cannot enter God's kingdom if your spirit is not new it's not holy and righteous you must become a new creation Galatians 6.15 
For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. See that? New creature. If a human is unaware of or exercises their free will and refuses to acknowledge Jesus as their creator, then the creator is unable to receive them into his holy eternal kingdom as they still have sin and sin cannot enter into the creator's pure and holy kingdom okay? as they still have sin god can't let them in he wants to let them in but he can't let them in revelation 21 8 but the fearful and unbelieving see unbelieving and abominable murderers whoremongers sorcerers adulterers lies shall have their place their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death. Verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that is defiled, neither whatever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. We need to be written in the Lamb's book of life. Our name must be written in the Lamb's book of life. We must be born again. We must have a new Holy Spirit. We must be cleansed by Jesus' blood. Otherwise, we're going to go to that lake of fire. Hallelujah. We need to do part three because we're running out, uh, our time's up. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for this word, Lord. I know it's a tough word. It's a hard word, Lord, but it is the truth, Lord. And we thank you that Jesus has provided the way for us. He has provided the remission of our sin, the resurrection of the dead, the victory over the devil, so that through faith we also can come in to your holy kingdom, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Touch the hearts people let them know that you've gone into heaven as a forerunner and if they put their trust in you they can go to heaven the devil's going to hell lord help them make the choice go with the devil to hell or you to heaven i think it's a pretty obvious choice what is best lord bless your people right now we pray in the name of jesus christ okay we'll come back and do part three i love you bless you talk to you soon